anti-goals are killing your content and burning you out. That's what happened to me. 11 months ago, I started writing on threads with 17 followers. Now I have over 6,000 across all platforms and I've racked up over 2 million views on my content over that time. But it's come at a huge cost. I got burnt out, depressed, and very overwhelmed. So I built this method called the focus funnel to help me manage my content workload and beat burnout. That's what I'm gonna give you in this lesson. But first, let's dive into what burnout really is and why you need its sexy alternative. Creative burnout. Creative burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental overwhelm caused by this constant pressure to create content and engage with your audience. There are three telltale signs of creative burnout, and the last one is the real silent killer. The first one is exhaustion. This refers to the fact that the never-ending cycle of creation and engagement becomes very overwhelming. It feels impossible to stay on top of everything. This is how I felt, quite frankly, just overwhelmed as fuck. This exhaustion really comes down to task overload. And for reference, this is all the stuff that I was doing on a weekly and daily basis over the past 12 weeks where I've just gone all in on content creation. Essentially, it was writing one newsletter, doing one YouTube video, doing one podcast, posting one Instagram carousel, posting two reels and repurposing them to shorts, hosting two weekly calls in my online community, uploading two to three video lessons inside that online community, attending an in-person mastermind and watching and engaging with other YouTubers, YouTube videos, posting three times on threads, engaging, posting three times on X, engaging, replying to DMs on X, posting inside community, engage with community, replying to DMs, Instagram stories. So when we look at this list, it's hardly surprising that I was overwhelmed. The next telltale sign of creative burnout is feeling unmotivated. Creative burnout drains your enthusiasm and turns activities that you once loved into chores. But you might be thinking, well, if it's a chore, it's fine, I'll, I'll still just grind through the work and get it done and the content will still be as good. But that's not the case because when it feels like a chore, you disconnect yourself from the content and it doesn't hit as hard. It doesn't land with the audience and it doesn't have the passion and enthusiasm infused in it that it really should. This is what happened with me. I was so fixated on just getting everything done on my list that we just saw that I lost sight of the why behind why I'm doing all of this. Every task felt like a matter of life or death because I was so intensely zoomed in on every little thing. For example, I couldn't understand that just not replying to people on threads for one day wouldn't be the end of the world. As a result, all of my weekly and daily tasks just felt like a means to an end that would never come. And that is the elusive, fully completed to-do list. So what was once a passion became a chore. It felt like I have to do everything. Third and final telltale sign of this thing we call creative burnout is the silent killer that I mentioned earlier. And it is being unproductive. Being unproductive when we're burnt out, it's not surprising. But what might be more surprising and more interesting is actually why we become unproductive when we're burnt out. This is mainly because creative burnout makes it harder to do deep work, which causes an increased reliance on this thing called shallow work. And shallow work are tasks that are easy to perform, but aren't particularly valuable or impactful. Think back to my list of weekly and daily tasks. The shallow work is really all of the daily stuff. It's all of the engagement and the, the little posts on threads and X and that stuff. And this shallow work creates this illusion of feeling productive because we're ticking all of this stuff off our list, but these shallow tasks aren't the things that are pulling the big levers. That's the problem with them. We feel we're being productive when really we're just maintaining this illusion of feeling productive. And the constant notifications from these apps and the group chats and the engagement groups, they just scattered my focus. It was taking like four hours a day. And ideally, I don't want this engagement daily shallow work stuff to be more than two hours a day. So this relates to the next reason how creative burnout makes us unproductive. And it's because shallow work 
is like a congested highway. The highway has multiple lanes and each task, so the engagement with the community and then replying to DMs on X and Instagram, all that stuff, represents a separate lane on the highway. So as you try to navigate this highway, your focus constantly shifts from one lane to the other as you constantly switch to the next task. Unsurprisingly, this scatters your focus because instead of just cruising towards your destination, which is achieving your goals, you're stuck in traffic, dealing with minor tasks and distractions that slow you down. So that is creative burnout and its destructive effects on your content. And to combat it, we need a better state of mind. Creative bliss. Creative bliss is a state of fulfillment and joy in the creative process. You know you're experiencing this beautiful state of creative bliss if you feel these three things. The second one is one of the most profound yet subtle shifts I've ever experienced in my creativity and productivity. You are in a state of creative bliss when you're rested. Rest is a state of recovery that enhances your creativity and productivity. Our Western society has a very warped understanding of rest. Alex Sujong Kim Pang wrote this book called Rest in 2016, and he says that there are four big insights about rest. And the first one is work and rest are partners. They go hand in hand. The second one is rest is active. Thirdly, rest is a skill. And fourthly, rest stimulates and sustains creativity. We can break this fourth one down into two different parts. We've got stuff that stimulates creativity, and then we have stuff that sustains creativity. Stuff that helps us be more creative, and then stuff that helps us stay in a creative state. Now, let's take a look at the stuff that stimulates creativity first. We have six things. We've got four-hour work days, morning routines, walks, naps, forced quits, and sleep. All of those probably sound fairly straightforward. Maybe force quits, not so much. Force quits are essentially, you are stopping work at a defined time just before work starts to become onerous because you know that stopping just before you start to resent it is the key to starting the next day feeling energized and motivated. And then with sleep, everyone knows what sleep is. Everyone knows we need it. Seven to nine hours, essential. So that is on the stimulating creativity side. Then we've got four things on the sustaining creativity side. First one, active recovery, exercise, deep play, sabbaticals. Active recovery could be something that gets the mind working, but not in a strictly productive sense. So maybe something like chess, playing a board game. Then exercise, self-explanatory, deep play. This could be something like playing an instrument, playing laser tag, I went on a date night with my partner last week and we went and played laser tag. That is a good form of deep play. <laughs> uh, what else? Painting, doing a puzzle, things like that. Bit of overlap with exercise, active recovery, depending on the activity it is. And finally, sabbaticals. And similarly to force quits, sabbaticals are force quits, but on a longer time horizon. These are when you might take off, say, one week every 12 weeks. So one week every season where you have a forced time off, or it could be, say, one year off after every seven years, something like that. But you are forcing yourself to take an extended period of time off work to then come back to work, having more ideas, more clarity and more creativity. And there are so many titans in entrepreneurship who have sworn by the importance of a sabbatical, one of them being Bill Gates. So those are 10 things you can do to both stimulate and sustain creativity. I think you should be doing at least seven. And unsurprisingly, when I was in that state of creative burnout, I was only doing three of these 10 things. I was doing a morning routine, I was going on walks, and I was exercising. Just recently, I have started incorporating four-hour workdays or my own version, which is a five-hour workday. I have started doing force quits. I've definitely started prioritizing my sleep more and I've also started incorporating some active recovery. Adding those things into my life since being in creative burnout has helped me achieve this state of creative bliss. As a result, I've started to feel more motivated about doing my creative work and engaging with the people I love speaking to. And that is a beautiful part of creative bliss. It reignites your passion for creation and engagement. 
probably most importantly, this motivation boost has reminded me of my why and helped me zoom out to see the bigger picture. For the first time in a long time, I can understand that missing a day of engagement is not the end of the world. Content creation is an infinite game. The whole point is to keep playing it. I'm realizing that my weekly and daily tasks are not a means to an end, but an end in and of themselves. The whole point is to find joy in doing them, not from gaining something from doing them. The point here is that the perspective shift from I have to to I get to is so profound. The third and final main benefit of being in creative bliss is being more productive. And when you are in this state of creative bliss, you are in a much better frame of mind to do deep work. And as a result, you're not as reliant on all of the shallow work that we spoke about earlier. Deep work tasks are tasks that require your full concentration and they create significant value and impact. Returning back to my weekly and daily task list, the deep work tasks are really all the stuff on my weekly to-do list. They're the things that do take more time, such as writing a newsletter, making a YouTube video, a podcast episode, things that require your concentrated attention, your undivided attention. So if shallow work is a congested highway, deep work is a streamlined highway. It has fewer lanes and each lane represents a key commitment. With fewer lanes, your mind and your focus isn't as scattered because there's less to focus on, which means you can cruise smoothly towards your destination, achieving your goals without the constant need to switch lanes and distracting yourself. This is why deep work is bliss. So if you want to enter this beautiful state of creative bliss, you need to take accountability and ditch creative burnout. Here's how. The focus funnel. The focus funnel is basically seven steps that help you achieve creative bliss. Funnel your focus on the things that truly matter to you and delete everything that doesn't. This is an overview of our wonderful focus funnel. And here is our first step in the funnel, list tasks. This is pretty self-explanatory, just requires you to list out everything you're currently doing in your creator business on a daily basis and a weekly basis. The daily stuff will typically be engagement. This is really just the shallow work and your weekly stuff will be creating content and this is the deep work. While you're creating your list of daily and weekly tasks, feel free to use my list for reference. Step two is to find your why. And now it's time to Simon Sinek the shit out of this whole focus thing. All we're doing here is asking ourselves, why am I creating content? What's the purpose for which I'm doing this creator thing in the first place? This is my why. My mum died when I was 13 and she believed in the importance of quality education. And initially I wanted to continue that mission in my old tutoring business and it helped high school students get straight into university. But I did that for a couple of years and I felt like a hypocrite because I didn't believe in college anymore. Now, my mission is to share what I call 21st century lessons on health, wealth, and wisdom. You should have been taught at school, but weren't. And this lesson is an example of one of those such lessons. So once you find your why, the next step is to specify your goal or goals. These are the things you want to achieve and your why is what fuels your pursuit of achieving them. There is so much information on the internet about effective goal setting. On this, I spent 10 hours simplifying Huberman's goal toolkit, so you don't have to. So literally just use this framework because it works. Firstly, the goal, it's got to be specific, it has to be actionable, and it has to be measurable. On this point of the goal being measurable, there are three things we want to measure. Firstly, is the duration of the goal. How long are you going to be pursuing it? 12 weeks, 12 months, whatever. The next thing we want to measure is how much time we spend on the action items that will help us pursue the goal. So maybe I spend 10 hours a week engaging and networking with fellow creators, for example. And then finally, we want to be able to measure whether we're actually completing these action items. So there needs to be a definitive point at which I can know if I've completed an action item. Maybe an action item is sending 30 DMs. I know I've completed that action item once I've sent the 30th DM. But if there isn't that number attached to it, I don't know if I'm completing it or not. 
You want to do those things. You want to make them SAM specific, actionable, measurable, and you want to measure those three things. For reference, my three goals are as follows. I want to build my Threads audience to 10K by July, 2025. I want to grow my YouTube channel to 1K subscribers by 2026. And I also want to convert 1,000 Threads followers into community members or newsletter subscribers by 2026 as well. And that is step number three of the focus funnel. Step number four is identify high leverage activities. Here we underline the minimum viable number of weekly and daily tasks from our list that we completed earlier. This step has two main points to address. And the first one is high leverage. A high leverage activity is something that has relatively low input and then high output. An example of a high leverage activity is creating timeless long form content because you create it once and it can exist and grow on the internet and help lots of people forever. So that's high leverage. And the next one is minimum viable number. Of all the tasks we're doing, what is the lowest amount that have the biggest impact overall? And that lowest amount might be three tasks and that would be the minimum viable number. Importantly, we want to make sure that everything we underline at this step directly relates to the goals that we identified in the previous step. And for reference, here are my high leverage activities. I've got my newsletter, my YouTube video, and my podcast. And then I've got my community calls, my in-person mastermind, YouTube engagement stuff. And then essentially all of my daily tasks relate to threads, community, or YouTube. Once we have identified our high leverage activities, we move on to the next step, which is delete everything else. Here, we are just deleting everything that we didn't underline on our weekly and daily tasks list. And we are deleting them because these are the things that aren't directly helping us achieve our goals. Those things that aren't helping us achieve our goals are what I call anti-goals. And to be clear, when I say delete, it means do not do them anymore. Here is what I'm deleting. On a weekly basis, I'm not gonna post an Instagram carousel and I'm not gonna post Instagram reels anymore. And on a daily basis, I'm not gonna be doing anything on X, posting three times a day, engaging, replying to DMs, and I'm not gonna be uploading stories to Instagram and doing all the engagement group stuff on Telegram. Basically, what I'm deleting is X and Instagram. I'm just deleting the apps and I'm not going to use them anymore, either professionally or personally, because they are scattering my focus, or they were. And since I've done this in just the last few days, I've literally freed up an extra two hours every day. Our sixth step of the focus funnel is to create time blocks. This involves determining the ideal length of a workday, then allocating about 60 to 70% of that time to content creation and the remaining 30 to 40% to audience engagement. And finally, we're then implementing those time allocations as time blocks and putting those time blocks in our calendar. What this looks like for me is my ideal length of a workday is five hours. I like five, you might like four, you might like six, you gotta figure it out for you. And then in terms of the time allocation, I like three hours for content creation and then two hours for audience engagement. And how this looks like as a time block on my calendar, I'll have three hours in the morning for creation and then two hours in the afternoon for engagement. The seventh and final step is to implement strict boundaries and say no. Here, we're going to use positive constraints to ensure you firstly stick to the ideal length of your workday. In other words, you get done what you need to get done within your respective time blocks for content creation and audience engagement. If I have allocated three hours for creation, try to avoid that becoming five hours. This is something that will take time, but you've got that positive constraint as a guide and you just wanna try and work towards sticking to that three hour block. The other positive constraint we're going to use is saying no to anti-goals or all the tasks or things that pop up in life that don't help us achieve our goals. Let's say a mate asks you to go for coffee during one of your content creation time blocks. This is where you say no, because that coffee is an anti-goal. And then the third positive constraint we're going to use is we're saying yes to something that does help us achieve our goal, but only if you're willing to replace it with something that's currently on your weekly or daily task list. So let's say someone asked me to join their thread Telegram engagement group, and 
I understand that these engagement groups, if they're going to be effective, they're like a 15 minute per day commitment. If my current daily task list looks like this, and I know that this already takes me two hours per day, I can't say yes to this person's request to join their engagement group without deleting and replacing it with one of these commitments already on my daily list because I'm using the positive constraint of two hours to ensure my five hour workday doesn't just become 10 over time because it will, I promise, I've seen what happens when you don't have the strict boundaries because that's how I burnt out. So those are our seven steps of the focus funnel and you should follow them if you want to avoid the godforsaken place of creative burnout and transition to our beautiful state of creative bliss. Simple summary. Creative burnout is the emotional, physical, and mental overwhelm from the constant pressure to create content and engage with your audience. Creative bliss is a state of joy and fulfillment in the creative process. Then the focus funnel is my proven seven step process to go from creative burnout to creative bliss, and it helps you funnel your focus. So the seven steps are firstly, list tasks. Secondly, find your why. Third, specify goals. Next, identify high leverage activities, then delete everything else, create time blocks, and lastly, implement strict boundaries and learn to say no. Finally, here is the lesson. It is the one thing you should take away from everything we have discussed so far. Ditch creative burnout and enter creative bliss through the focus funnel. To close, here is one of my favorite quotes from the Renaissance man himself. Simplicity, is the ultimate sophistication. That quote is very relevant to what we've just spoken about because achieving this state of creative bliss requires a lot of intentional work. Some might say it can be sophisticated to get there, but the result is this feeling of simplicity and ease and calm, and it beats the creative burnout that you get when you don't have those systems in place. We will wrap it up there. YouTube is a long game and look, I'm very happy playing it. I love making these videos. And as I said earlier with specifying goals, I want to try and reach 1000 subscribers by 2026. And I'm currently at just over 150. So if you liked this lesson and you don't want to miss out on future ones, please take the two seconds to subscribe to the channel. It is a tiny bit of effort from you that makes a huge difference for me, really. And that is it for this lesson. Keep it simple until the next one. Oh, by the way, I mentioned high leverage activities as this fourth step in the focus funnel. One of my last lessons is all about leverage and how you can use it in your one person business. I'll put it, link it somewhere up there. Go check it out. It's one of my favorite personal lessons as well.